What's up, guys? I'm Kara Star, and this clip is from Difficult Content, an interview podcast about Final Fantasy XIV. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below and click the link at the end for the full interview. Let's break down Eureka Orthos itself. Which job was your first solo clear on and which was your last? So I went in as Paladin because Paladin I thought would be great. I zoned into floor one as Paladin. I did one AoE pull. And then if you have ever been inside of EO, I'm sure you have, you may have noticed the monsters are ultra tanky like right away. So after my first AoE pull on Paladin, I gave up on Paladin. I quit the run and then I started a ninja run instead because I was like, there's no way I'm doing this as a tank first job. So then I did a ninja run. Well, I had to stop this ninja run at floor 60 because I ran out of potions. And also my Edupol was not quite capped. So then I did Paladin again. So I went back on Paladin to get potions to finish my ninja run. But I got so little potions that I actually just finished the Paladin run first. <laughs> my Putchard farming run was my first clear, which was my Paladin. And my last clear was actually like what is quote unquote considered the easiest job. It was Machinist. And uh, the reason I kept Machinist for last, it was at the end of the 34 hour stream. So I knew I needed like something not that hard for the last jobs. Which job then was your easiest solo clear and which was the hardest? Easiest solo clear? It was hard, man, to answer that because like, if you're coming from the other two dungeons with a lot of experience, the jobs, they feel kind of samey. They feel very similar. I would say Samurai was probably my easiest solo clear. And I can't even tell you why. It just felt the easiest. Maybe because I like pressing the buttons more than the other jobs. The hardest one was definitely Astro, unsurprisingly, because Astro is really hard job in the other two dungeons. Still wasn't that bad though but it was like compared to the other jobs in you it was definitely the hardest which job was the most fun to clear on and which was the least fun most fun has to be Samurai, definitely. Such a fun job in EO. And I think a big reason why Samurai is so fun is because if you're raiding on Samurai, then you have to make sure you use all your bursts at the same time, right? Because you want to get it done under your two-minute burst window. Don't have this in EO, though, because Samurai doesn't buff itself. So what was really nice on Samurai is I could go on a monster, use, let's say, my mid array and then something else, kill it. Then I could go to the next monster and then use another burst, like my OG, kill it, and then, you know, go on a third monster, use something else. So all my bursts did not have to happen at the same time and the reason that is really nice for eo to not have to burst all at the same time is because usually if you have to burst super hard a monster you're going to overkill it and then you have like an awkward five or ten second where you still have buffs but you have nothing to kill and that's very annoying to deal with i think samurai the fact that you don't have to worry about that at all made it a lot more fun and also the dashes being actually damage efficient like you don't lose damage when you use your dash as samurai because it's the same can keep her damage value as just blowing your whatever it's called shinten i think that was very fun the least fun job was basically dancer for all the reasons that it's playing but the opposite dancer is so focused on the two minute burst that it's like whenever i was going to pull a monster i would overkill it and then i had to plan to pull a second monster so i could offload the rest of my burst but then the really bad part about dancer is your main burst thing, thing is a huge AOE circle so then i had to position myself to hit more than one monster with the dance but then i had to make sure i would not hit more than two monsters because i don't want to die right and that was just like you know every 30 seconds i have to do this very annoying. Didn't like it at all. Sure, Dancer is a range GPS, so you can kite the monsters around. You can also interrupt bots. But for EO specifically, I don't think it's a big deal to be able to kite. And I also don't think it's a big deal to be able to interrupt mimics. It just wasn't very fun for me, Dancer. Even though I don't think Dancer was that bad. I just didn't really have a good time with it. Which Pomander is the most useful and which is the least useful in EO? The most useful in EO? I mean, a lot of Pomanders are useful. Like, that's a very hard question to answer. A Dummy Clone is not a Pomander because if Dummy Clones were a Pomander, then I would say Dummy Clone. But if it's not the Mitlone, I have to say it's probably Liturgy. Because Liturgy is an interesting commander. It's both a learning commander, but also an optimizing commander. So when you use Liturgy, monsters attack much slower for like 10 minutes or something insane like that. And by much slower, I mean like, it might be like a thousand percent slower on cast times than other attacks. It's something insane. So basically, whenever you would use a Liturgy, it, would, it was basically a floor where you could learn what the monsters did. Because usually they would show you a telegraph way before the cast actually happened. That fact alone probably means Liturgy is the most useful. Personally, I think Liturgy is a really broken Pomander. It's also super common to find in chess. It's still a little hard to answer because as useful as a Liturgy is, I mean, if you have a no ability, no item, gloom floor, then Serenity is going to be much better in that specific situation.
question, but overall, I think liturgy was the most useful. And which is the least useful? That's a weird one, because if you've ever done MLI High or PUTD, you would know that steel is the top commander. Steel is like your lifeblood. If you don't have a steel, there's so many jobs where you can't do the bosses or you can't kill most of the monsters on the floor. You can't do anything. In EO, man, steel is actually not useful that much. It's actually, yeah, the least useful commander. Unless you're scoring, which is something else in itself. So if you're scoring, you're doing video we pulls, in which case, yes, steel is useful. But if you're not scoring, you're just on the one v one everything and now nothing has crits and nothing hits that hard. And steel is just kind of nice to have because it saves you potion, but it's not really useful. I think steel actually went from the most useful in the other two deep dungeon to the least useful in EO. Which boss is your favorite and which is your least favorite? My favorite has to be 99. And it's not even because of the boss mechanics itself. It's for two reasons. First reason is they put the banger of a soundtrack from Shadowbringer, which is the best expansion, by the way. And the second reason is that I can't believe they put a boss on 99, which is just so cool. Like, I wish they put the bosses on the 199 and 99 in Evolve Hind PUTD2, because that's just so cool. Because what happens quite often in the other two deep dungeons is the last floor, you know, the floor before you actually clear, it's usually not that cool because you kept a rage or like a petri or a match side for it and then you just kind of blow it and then you go right i mean an actual boss on 99 that felt amazing that makes the 99 boss my favorite not even considering the mechanics and all that the fact that the boss is on 99 amazing i do wish it was a little bit less of a tank it has a lot of hp if you don't have a dummy clone for that boss on my astro clear i actually attacked the boss for a minute with strength just to see what kind of damage i was doing i did four percent in one minute with strength so that boss would have taken like probably more than 30 minutes if i had not used a dummy clone so they're just like super tanky and that's the only unfortunate thing about 99 i mean they kind of have to make it tanky because of the way the clones work so that's just life and uh, which bus is my least favorite i'd say it's the tiger the tiger would be the 70 bus the tiger is just so freaking tanky but he also doesn't really do interesting mechanics like all he does is a line thing that you have to walk away from but it doesn't even hurt so you can face tank it with steel on any job then he does an in and out then you just dodge a few aoe's and then he does an in and out again that you have to stand in a specific spot for and that's it that's all he does the tiger actually reminds me of Evan on high bus design which is like super static mechanics where you can always stand in the same spot to uh, do them plus it has the same like kind of hp sponge uh, problem 7v not a fan my least favorite for sure as a deep dungeon player in general are you happy with eureka orthos do you think it's a success with the general public and do you think it's a success with the deep dungeon community and I love how you phrase that question. I love that you ask the success in the general public and then the success with the deep dungeon community. Because every time someone has asked me that question, they ask me, what do I think of EO? And then I get flamed in the comments. Yeah, we're trying to avoid you getting flamed in the comments here. So two part question. So am I happy with EO? I know there's a lot of other veterans for the deep dungeon community that are unhappy with EO. I'd say in general, I am happy. I think it would have been better. I think it would have been worse. I'd say it's about as fun as MLI for me. And you know, I spend a lot of time in MLI. So do I think it's a success with the general public? I think it's a huge success with the general public. Almost anyone I've talked to, they enjoyed EO. And a lot of these people, they, they truly despise PUTD and Evan on high. Now, I don't know if that's because EO is shiny and new, so they actually went out of their way to go on the higher floors, but like, they've never done the same the other deep dungeons. I don't know, but I would say like from talking to everyone that is not already super deep into deep dungeons, they, almost all of them enjoyed EO. In fact, I even did a group run uh, with my friends and we had a blast. So I'd say, yeah, huge success with the general public. Do I think it's a success with the deep dungeon community? That one's rough to answer. There's definitely people in the deep dungeon community that, you know, they love it. Me, I don't love it. I like it. I'm happy with it, like I said. There's a lot of people that are unhappy with it. It's because it, it just feels very different. As uh, Sage uh, 9 tv said, it doesn't play like a deep dungeon, at least if you're trying just to clear normally. It's a very different experience. I think a big reason why veterans, they don't enjoy EO as much is because if you're a normal player, and by a normal player, I just mean like someone that is going to do the content like once and maybe a few times for the mount and you're done. You want to go on your main job. You want to get it done and then you want to get out. So they kind of balance EO like that. In EO, the reason crits and auto attack damage is gone is because it was their way to make jobs more balanced with each other. Because now that you don't have to care about surviving, then it doesn't really matter if you're samurai and your defensive suck, and it doesn't really matter if you're a tank because it doesn't really matter because you can always just kill whatever is in front of you. That was an intentional thing they did, which the general player loves because now they can do it on their job. But for people that are kind of messed up like me and we just do this content over and over on different jobs, that's bad because if I play Samurai and then I play Dragoon, I don't really get a different experience because the whole defensive aspect is missing.
hanging, and then it's just really doing my rotation, right? It's kind of like a raid tier. I call EO quite often the Raider's Deep Dungeon, and I think that's a big reason why is because it feels kind of like you're just doing your DPS rotation for most of it. Because since the jobs are mostly balanced with each other, then you know you're gonna get somewhat of a same experience between the jobs. It's why I said I like that you asked a question in two parts, because even though I said all these things, and even though it sounds like I'm trashing EO, it's still a success with the general public. And I know for a fact if they just release PUTD2 or like MLI2 with the same auto attack stuff, the crits, people would have disliked it and they would have never made another one again. I think that's just the natural progression of thing. I think it's a modernized deep dungeon that that's just the way it is. I mean, there's still pleasure to be found if, even if you really like PUTD and MLI. For me, what I really like in EO is scoring. I happen to score like, you know, 90% plus of my runs. I can still find a lot of fun in EO even if it's different. Last thing to say about that is, yeah, EO is very different from the other two deep dungeons, but then, you know, it, they didn't really delete the other two. You can't choose now. Like, maybe you want to deal with mechanics and you go inside of EO. Maybe you want to get one shot by a Manticore or you go in Evan on high. Maybe you want to get screwed by a treasure room, so you go in PUTD instead. If you could change one thing about Eureka Orthos, what would it be and why? I wish they made auto attacks more damaging and they also made crits a thing again. I do I acknowledge that people, they would dislike it. Like at the very least, it's kind of a little bit of copium and hopium there. But if they ever made like a hard mode of EO, then I wish that's something they did for it. We have Savage and Ultimate and all these added difficulties. And like if they ever did something like that for EO, that's one thing I would love to see. You know, crits back and more auto attack damage. And you know, I, I did not mention the 1 to 30 nerf because everyone wants that. The easy cop out answer would be I wish they made 1 to 30 less tanky because man monsters are hella tanky on that set like no one likes the 130 grind not the casuals not the pros not the scorers like, no one likes it so I don't even know why they're not nerfing it maybe in 5 years when they release a new deep dungeon they'll give it a patch but who knows if someone's new to deep dungeons and has never attempted a solo run which job would you recommend they start on Oh man, that's the question. I get asked this a hundred times per stream. Let's go for either three deep dungeons in order. If you're new to deep dungeons and if you never attempted a solo run, I would say going for EO first is a safe bet. In EO, there's a high chance that you can just run your main job with about the same difficulty as if you were doing another job. So for EO, you just want to clear on your favorite job that you are the most comfortable on. Unless your favorite job is something like Astro or Scholar. In which case, if your favorite job is Astro or Scholar, I would say go for your second favorite. But as long as it's not these two jobs, EO, just play whatever you feel like playing. For Evan on high, I would say you want to go for the tank. Uh, the Manticore is not going to one-shot you, it's going to three-shot you instead, so actually have a little bit of time think of what you're going to do. And for PUTD, you actually have some options. You can do like, a high damage DPS that can kite. Something like Machinist or Summoner is very strong. Or you can do a tank. I would say something like Warrior or uh, Dark Knight. It's kind of the same as Evan on high. If you're playing a tank, you're going to have to manage your time better than a DPS, but it's still a good time. And for PUTD, I would also say it's a fairly safe choice to go something like Sage or White Mage. So P2D, you can actually branch out a little bit. And on high, the auto attack damage and crits are, are just so beefed up that going as a tank is highly recommended for your first clear. And EO, whatever job you enjoy, as long as it's not Astro and Scholar. Hope you enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button below and click this link right here for the full interview.